Hi all, in this video I'm going to talk about autism and Asperger's syndrome because it's a condition that I was diagnosed with at least three years ago um, and a friend of mine has actually said I, it doesn't seem like I have Asperger's syndrome not compared to another guy he knows who has it but the spectrum is wide. That's why it's called aut aut Autism Spectrum Disorder. Um, and I've actually heard that's why the Americans class Asperger Syndrome as the same because it's somewhere on that scale. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about what it's like for me, the symptoms, what what it was like when I was growing up because uh, I was diagnosed when I was 31 I'm now 34 yeah it must have been when I was 31 but anyway I can only remember as far back as my high school years so but basically when I was at school I always felt awkward. I didn't feel like I ever fitted in with any of the other kids. I didn't have very many friends. I had literally I probably could have counted them on one hand, maybe two if I was lucky. Uh, I hated group activities. You know, where they would split the classroom into groups and you'd be assigned an activity hated doing that um, same with the tasks that required a partner unless I was with a friend of mine someone I was familiar with but back then and in my adult years I just felt like I was just a weirdo awkward you know not normal <laughs> um, totally oblivious to the fact that there could be a reason for it you know, trying to get a job was awkward. My dad, bless him, would uh, do his best to try and, you know, encourage me to go out there and walk into shops and businesses and ask if they had any jobs going, etc. But to me, I never felt like it was as easy as he was basically, to me, making out it was. And I would look around me and I would see people, you know, Total strangers communicating pretty well with each other, even though they don't really know each other. And I would find such talk awkward and hard to do. And you know, so I spent pretty much till I was 31 thinking I was just a weirdo. That you know, I just was socially awkward, basically. You know, and had weird interests, like collecting road lamps and traffic cones, for example. And Lego, you know. Before I found out about AFOLs, adult, adult fans of Lego, I always thought, you know, Lego was a kid's toy, and I used to love it. <laughs> um, so I've got a lot to be thankful for, for the internet, but that's a whole other video. Uh, the only reason it came about that I, at the time, I could have Asperger's Syndrome is because Mum read an article in a magazine, one of her favourite magazines, and it was describing this person who had Asperger's Syndrome, and to her it just mirrored me. That's what she said, it mirrored me. So she did go behind my back, kind of, and rung a... I think it was the Asperger Society in Norwich, I think, um, to see what they thought. And after that, I did go for, like, the initial test, which was, like, a quick test. A bunch of questions, basically. That's all I sat there and answered. A bunch of questions on a questionnaire with Mum. 
we sat there together, they left us in the room together, and we just did it together and uh, filled in this form, questionnaire, and I actually scored quite high on that thing, on that um, score chart, <laughs> which is when they put me on the waiting list to see the specialist, the psychologist. Uh, I think I waited for a, over a year. Yeah, so I must have done the um, questionnaire when I was about 29, 30, something like that. Then we did the um, actual diagnosis where I went to see the psychologist. And a couple of weeks after that, I got the diagnosis. Uh, for me, it can be up and down. I can have good days, I can have bad days. In fact, it's that up and down, sometimes I can just have a bad couple of hours. <laughs> um, and by that I mean I can just be feeling down and depressed for a couple of hours, and then as I am now, afterwards, you know. Um, I don't quite know how to describe it. It's like, you know, it's, it's like a storm rolling in, you know, when it starts off light with a little bit of light, rumbles of thunder and lightning, and as the storm comes further and further over, it gets worse and worse and worse, and then gradually fades out as it passes. That's what my downers are like. You know, I feel it coming on in too bad, and it just progressively gets worse, and I start feeling worse, and I start feeling more negative. Um, usually when I start feeling that, I will deliberately reduce my presence online with talking to people. I won't admin on the groups um, until that has passed because I can get very negative and uh, you know I can misinterpret things quite a lot and uh, it just ain't good <laughs> so I deliberately try. It's weird because I feel it happening but I can't do anything about it and Aside from, you know, do things to try and bring me out of that downer, like listen to music, watch my favourite TV shows or YouTubes, you know, anything to try and take my mind off of the downer. And that usually happens if I've had a stressful day. Um, if something happened that day, which is given me quite a lot of stress, you know, someone's upset me for whatever reason, or I got a letter in the mail that caused me a panic, um, you know, I can go into a downer later that day, or even the next day, um, so, yeah, it's, that is one of the things I actually hate the most about having Asperger's syndrome. Because it just feels awful to me. I just want to blow all this negative bollocks out, you know, like... And put statuses up on Facebook that are really negative, you know, like... I can't even really think at the moment of what I would want to say, of what goes through my head. Some of it isn't nice, because some of it does sort of include suicidal thoughts as well. That is when I get really bad, and that is when I shut down completely. That's what they call a shutdown. Um, because that's the other thing I'll have as well. I'll have what they call a shutdown, where I just won't talk to anyone or talk to very few people anyway. Um... I think the good parts with autism and Asperger's syndrome, you will find that many of us are actually very honest, will very rarely lie. Um, I can't, I hate lying, hate lying to anyone. You know, if, if I've done something on the group, the My Little Pony group I admin, by accident or whatever, and someone asks, you know, who did that, I would go, me. I can't lie and say, nope, wasn't me, I don't know who did it, you know. 
in my mind, I just got to be honest, you know, so if I did something, I did it, you know, I wouldn't try and pass the buck to someone else, and I'd be like, they did it, no, if I did something wrong, it's my fault, I'll take the flack for it. Uh, what else? Let's stick to what it is about me before I go into the rest of it. I think that's the easiest thing instead of keep going back and forth. Um, I do suffer with social anxiety. I don't like going outside. You know, I like staying in this flat in my comfort zone. Um, I can go to Norwich. I don't really like it because there's a heck of a lot of people around and traffic and uh, um, and there's what they call a sensory overload. Um, I mean, sometimes sitting here with just my speakers, depending on the type of noise coming out of them speakers, it can actually hurt my ears. I end up cranking the volume right down. Uh, that's one of the reasons I don't really like going into the city or a busy supermarket. That, and I also feel paranoid about what other people are thinking when they look at me and whatnot. Especially as I've got this big ulcer on my lip at the minute, which is driving me bananas. Uh, so, I've got that social anxiety issue, which, I mean, if I had an appointment in the city, I have gotten into trouble by, you know, basically bottling out and not going. Because the social anxiety just gets to me. Um, and I just want to find a way to deal with that. But these days, you know, with the NHS, with all their funding cuts and whatnot, trying to get help and advice is difficult. Uh, so... Anywho, I mean, I would love to go, like, down to London and see my friend Mark Hyder. Even if I stayed in a hotel for the weekend, you know. See, that's another thing. That's different. That's the other thing I struggle with. Doing something different. Doing something new. Something I'm not used to. You know, something unfamiliar. Going into unfamiliar territory as well, like London. Big city, thousands of people. Yeah, I would love to, but I would have to find a way to deal with that social anxiety. Um, I mean, I can't drag my brother, my sister, my mum, dad, etc. around everywhere I go. <laughs> so I would like to find a way to deal with it so I can do it on my own. You know, Thomas Mem has said, you know, I could go up there, up to uh, Manchester Way and go see him. Which I would do, love to do. But again, I've got that bloody... That is the thing that does it. It's that social anxiety, that thought of going all that way on a public train. You know, it's hard, really hard to actually explain how I feel. Even though I want to, I would love to, if I could have the money as well. <laughs> that's the other problem, but that's not related to this video at all. But funding is a partial part of it as well. Um, so, uh, yeah. I think the social side of it is probably what affects me the most. Um, there is a few things that I will differ with with some other people with autism and Asperger's syndrome. I mean, it's commonly said we are fussy eaters. Mm. But, sorry about that, something just fell out of my teeth. Anyway, that was a big yawn, Nemo. He's sitting over here, by the way. 
Um, I'm not a fussy eater, actually. Um, I've got to be because of my tum. I've got a very sensitive tummy these days. It doesn't seem to like gluten. It doesn't like lactose. And because of my diabetes, it doesn't like sugar either. <laughs> but when I was younger, you know, mum would cook a meal. I didn't complain. I didn't throw a tantrum. I would just eat it. Loved it. You know, vegetables as well. I love vegetables. Don't know why. I know it's probably weird that you'd hear someone actually say that. Because it ain't common. But I do love vegetables. That's why I love going over to mum's on a Sunday and having a roast dinner. Because I get to eat vegetables. Because I'm too lazy to cook them myself. So I'll admit it. I am a lazy bugger when it comes to cooking. Anyway. Slightly off subject there. I am, however, a fussy drinker. This is my primary choice of drink. Cola. This has probably gone flat because it's been sitting up here for a while. But yeah, that's my primary choice. I'm not keen on hot drinks. I mean, when I was younger, before I developed all these intolerances, I would drink cup of tea, I would I would drink a coffee if it was milky and sweet. Because it's a bit too bitter for me. Um coffee is. I mean these days if I could actually handle it I could have things like a latte or a really creamy frothy coffee, you know. Well I suppose I could if I put lacto free milk in it. But uh, yeah. I don't like squash drinks as well. And I cannot think of the other name for them. Um, we commonly call it squash here, you know. It's that sort of juice drink that you add the water to. You put about that much in a glass and add the water to. It's like concentrated juice drink sort of thing. Uh, but there's another name for it and I can't remember it. But anyway, I'm not keen on that. Unless I pour some lemonade with it. I used to get the cheapest lemonade I could find. Because I had very little lemon taste in it. And actually mix it with such squash and make my own fizzy drinks. Pardon me. Um, oh, going back to the social thing. I do feel awkward as well. Because when people are even making small talk. When I see them out in the street. I actually hate that. <laughs> Not because, well, I've seen a fellow person with autism say they hate it because they don't see the point in it. But I think for me, it's because my mind goes blank and I just, I don't know what to say back, you know. So, my mind goes blank with math questions. It hates math. Unless it's something simple like one plus one. I ain't kidding. I st even at 34, I don't know all my times tables. Only the easy ones. <laughs> I'm probably not the only one, but my mind just really doesn't like math. And that's what it's like when I'm having a conversation with someone I'm not familiar with, you know. And again, I don't know, it's just certain things as well that I actually find... Well, it takes time for my brain to process it. Uh, by which time, the person I'm talking to has moved on to something else. <laughs> um, it is commonly said if you follow any of the autistic um, pages on Facebook they will say that someone with autism and Asperger's syndrome needs about 8 seconds to process that question and form an answer you alright Nemo? anyway I think he's alright yeah which can be annoying for a lot of people but I can't help it because my brain just doesn't function that quick. Which is actually annoying for me because, like I said, I could be having a conversation with someone, I'm listening, but by the time my brain has formulated a reply, they've moved on to something else. Or if I'm talking to a, a few people, you know, they've both moved on to something else by the time I've formulated a reply myself. <laughs> Which is annoying for me and probably annoying for them as well. Uh, 
eye contact. You've probably noticed throughout this video I don't keep eye contact with the camera. Um, it's partly because in my mind I don't see it as necessary to keep eye contact with someone. I listen just as well to someone talking to me without my eyes staying fixed on theirs um, as I do when my eyes are wandering around the room. That and for, to me I just can't keep my eyes locked on anything. I can't keep them locked on the camera. My eyes just I just feel more comfortable when my eyes are looking around a room. You know? Which is pretty much why I'm like that when I'm on camera like this. You look at a lot of other YouTubers, they can stay fixed on the camera like this for a long period of time, staring out. I mean, I'm really forcing myself to do this right now. To stay focused on the camera like this. What my eyes want to do is actually start doing this and looking around the room while I talk to you and, you know, to me that is just natural and what feels comfortable. Staying fixated on, I know it's seen as the thing to do, especially if you're in an interview or something, to stay, uh, your eyes stay fixed on theirs. It just feels really weird and uncomfortable to me. It really does. I don't. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, I really don't actually, but it doesn't mean I'm not listening. So don't ever think I'm not listening. <clears throat> you know, even my mum has said, are you listening? Because I'll do the same to her, but I am. Um, I definitely am listening all the time. It's just my eyes just, I got to wonder. I got to, my eyes have got to take in everything around them. Which actually brings you on to the next thing, sensors. Uh, we can have a thing called sensory overload. Um, which can happen if we, well at any time, at any minute, you can go out to a supermarket, you know, you've got all them people talking, perhaps a radio on, some supermarkets play music, so you got that. Other noises, noises of the trolleys going round. For someone with autism and Asperger's syndrome, that can actually be quite daunting. And if they have autism really badly, if they're really high on the spectrum, they could have a meltdown there and then in the store. Um, pretty much just because the sights and the sounds, and maybe even the smells, you know, if they've got a, a fresh bakery in the supermarket, it just gets to them and it's too much for their brain to handle and I suppose when kids with autism have a meltdown it's very easy for people to mistake that as just an average temper tantrum you know from an unruly child but it's different it's just basically their brain can't handle it and they just break down basically have a breakdown that's all it is um, I don't think I ever had anything like that. Even as a kid, I can remember I would just go upstairs and sit on my own in the bedroom, doing my own thing, um, which is called a shutdown. I do have shutdowns even now. Um, I also have downers. Or I just feel really down and depressed and not really wanting to talk to anyone. Um, so if you got me on like Skype or Facebook, if I take a long while to reply, I might be in a downer. Um, I tend to stay away from things like that until I've brought myself out of it because uh, I actually um, when I'm in a Depending on how bad the downer is, if I get a real bad one, I get very negative, and I might jump because Nemo's down here wanting to get on my lap. No, he's walked off. Okay. Sometimes he sticks his claws in and that hurts. Anyway. So. I do try to stay away from that. See, it's spectrum. 
some people will have the meltdowns, others like me will have the shutdowns. Well, I just shut myself away from the world as much as possible. Until it passes. It will pass eventually, but it's caused by the same thing, really. A sensory overload and stress. If something has happened that day that has caused me a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety, I will go into a downer and or a shutdown. Sometimes it both happens at the same time. Um, so don't panic if I'm not replying. I would say I'm reasonably okay. If I'm not, then I would probably talk. Because it helps. I'll talk to my friends at least, my closer friends. Um, so yeah, that, that is basically the up and down part of having Asperger syndrome. But I don't forget, this is mostly it's for me. It can differ for someone else. That's why it's a spectrum. You know, it depends how bad they have it or how not so bad they have it. I actually wouldn't have a clue where I am on the spectrum. Somewhere in the middle if I was to put, you know, place myself. Middle to high-ish. Because of this, mine is, really mine is just the social side of life. You know, I struggle with that mostly. Anyway. Uh, the positives, um, we're honest, it's said that we are honest, um, I know I am, because I just don't see the point in lying at all. You'll find most people with autis autism, rather, or Asperger syndrome, are pretty damn honest. We can lie. But it's usually for a reason, like to keep a surprise for someone. For example, a birthday surprise or whatever, surprise party, etc. Um, but, you know, if I got caught out doing something wrong, I wouldn't try and lie my way out of it. I would just say, yep, me, I did it, I'm guilty. You know, and I will take the flack for it, basically. Because uh, I, I actually don't like to lie. I hate it, and I hate people who lie to me. I know some people will lie because they think telling the truth is going to hurt. I find being told the truth hurts a lot less than being lied to. Um, it's also said that people with the condition don't have a lot of empathy. Um, we do, we just don't tend to show it. We, some of us will find it hard to show certain emotions. I don't like crying in front of people. I actually cry and shed a tear at a lot of things I see on Facebook, but I'd never do it in front of someone, which may make me come across as rather heartless. You know. Because I suck at showing emotions. Uh, in fact, with me, if I see or hear someone crying on a video or something on Facebook or YouTube, I want to cry too. That's what it's like for me. I feel what they're feeling. You know, which is why I pretty much stay away from horror movies and whatnot, because I feel the emotion too much. Um, as weird as that might sound. Uh, anyway, I'm going to move on to something a bit more positive, which would be interests. Uh, we can have some strange interests. Um... I think my strangest one is just lights. I like anything that lights up. Christmas lights, my barricade lights, my bike lights, light fittings, you know, anything that lights up, I just like it and I want to buy it. 
Um, and I actually do have a string of blue LED Christmas lights going around this lounge, which I use as a what I call a sensory light. Um, I'll turn them on and I'll put them on the slow fade in and slow fade out setting and uh, I just find that quite relaxing to sit here with that so they stay up all year round in fact they've been up since last Christmas um, and I do put them on now and again I've got a set for the bedroom as well to go up when I get a chance um, I mean, I'm sitting here now with Christmas lights up love lights I think it is, like they say, just a sensory thing for me. I just find different lights and certain colours to be quite soothing. I've got a set of orange ones going around my Lego table here and I actually like that glow. So I may actually put those ones up in the hallway and leave them up there. Um, but you'll find people with the condition they will have several hobbies they might be passionate about all of them I mean I'm probably passionate with three of my interests one's behind me right here My Little Pony Friendship is Magic probably one of the uh, <laughs> strangest ones for an adult to uh, get into um, and I've got the Lego the computers if you follow my channel for a while you'll know I love tinkering around with computers building them building the old ones like I've got in the bedroom and trying to get broken ones to work again you know I enjoy doing that same with bicycles um, and I like my old tech, like all my old radios and things I've got dotted about here. And so forth. Uh, but I think my favourite thing to collect is my road lamps, barricade lamps that I've got in the bedroom. Which I've got over 60 of now. I think I'm close to 70. I can't remember. I think I've got, actually I'm going to have a count now because I can't remember how many I've got in the collection. And hopefully some more to come, I hope. But uh, people always ask why I collect those. Again, it's a light, it's an unusual type of light. You know, that you wouldn't use in the home, you know, because it's designed for roadworks builders etc and the railways and the police emergency service and whatnot. Um, I'm actually surprised at how many collectors I've come across online actually again that's, I've got the internet to thank for a lot actually because until I come across Facebook and eBay I didn't really think there was that many collectors out there if any at all but anyway, I'm digressing again. Um, I'm just trying to think. Gone over my things that I find awkward, haven't I? Uh, you'll find that many of us with the condition won't judge either. I don't care what religion you are, I don't care about your skin colour or you know if you're transgender, gay, bi, whatever. I don't care about that. I just care about you as a person. I love you whatever you are, you know. I don't judge. I've actually got loads of various friends on Facebook, you know, from lots of different religions as well. Lots of different religions actually and backgrounds, transgenders, 
gays, you know, you name them, I've got them on my Facebook. And from different countries, and I love it. I love the fact that I've got such a variety of lovely people on my Facebook. Because I, I can't stand judgmental people, I can't stand people who will judge someone purely based on you know, their sexuality, their religion, or their country of origin. Can't stand people like that. I d and um, you'll find that many people with my condition are exactly the same. We don't judge. We don't like to judge. You know. And I think if that was one of my... If someone asked me what was my favourite thing about myself... That would be it, the fact that I do not judge. Sometimes I read things on Facebook, like news articles, that make me want to, but I sit back and think, no, no, I'm not going to judge. That's just the news, trying to put the spoon in the pot and stir it, sort of thing, like they love to do. I don't know if you noticed, but I've got a fairy friend on here. <laughs> bit of an animal lover as well. I love furry critters. Cats, dogs, squirrels are my favourite ones. In fact there's probably too many things that I like actually. <laughs> Very little that I actually hate. I don't like dishonesty either but I think I've already said that. Always be truthful. It's better in the end. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I can cover. This is probably this video has probably gone on for at least half an hour. But I do like doing this video. I do like talking about it. If you've got any questions, ask me. Or even Google it. There's lots of information about the conditions out there. Um, I mean, my friend Thomas met him. Um... Because he said I don't seem like I've got Asperger's syndrome because I don't, I'm not the same as his other friend he knows in Canada, who's got the same condition. Um, and I suppose that can be confusing for a lot of people because I suppose they think or will think, you know, it's a condition. It's all going to be the same like most other conditions. No. Nope. Nope, not with autism and Asperger's syndrome. It's, you know, what one person may have trouble with or difficulty with, another person with a condition won't. I follow Autistic Genius on Facebook, and he's done talks in front of schools, you know, in front of students, in front of adults, big talks on autism. I couldn't do that. The anxiety I would feel would go through the freaking roof. <laughs> but again, he can do that, you know. I don't really know if he has any problems, you know, with anxiety and doing things like that. I've never thought to ask him, actually. But the bottom line is he can do things like that easier than I can. Uh, it's just such a wide spectrum, it really is, you know, I think the easiest thing to do is, if you know someone's got the condition, is to basically talk to them and ask them, you know, what affects them, what doesn't affect them, etc. Basically talk to them about it, you know. What I've just done to this camera, just talk to them and ask them the questions about it because it's going to be different. You'd probably be surprised at how different it is. Uh, no doubt I've actually forgotten things. Uh, I suppose if I forget things and I remember, I could do another video on that thing specifically. But I think as it's 2.48 in the morning. I'm going to shut the video down here before it goes on for too long. So, if you have any questions, just 
leave them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'm not an expert on the condition, but if you've got any questions related to me directly, then I can most likely answer those at least. Um, or I could probably give you a link to someone or somewhere that could answer your question. If I can't, so drop them down below. Nemo's up on the desk. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. And I will talk to you all again very soon. Bye.